So this is all static pictures. I did not have a way to set up my phone to record what I was working on. But this relates to a situation with barrel droop that I ended up having in an old um, receiver, an old Ruger 1022 receiver. And what made me think I had barrel droop was the fact that I could dial down further than I could dial up, even with a 50 MOA rail on. Tried numerous things to figure this out, but truly it just had to be that. So um, I decided that um, it had to go. So this is the gun I've been shooting the NRL 22 series with while my Bergara is out. Um, I'm sure you've seen it on another video, uh, but this has that particular um, old OEM receiver in it with a kid barrel, kid bolt, and kid charging handle. And TAC driver shoots really well, except when I needed to go beyond a certain distance, I could literally only dial up to 14.1. That's as high as I could dial up with a zero at 50 and a 50 MOA rail. Yet I could dial down an infinitesimal amount of of uh of amount of de-escalation and so figured that had to be it so um i was able to um hook up with a kid receiver and swap that out now the interesting thing is um swapping the receiver i could dial to 14.1 and now i can dial to 28.4 elevation that's how much this little bit of droop we're about to talk about took off of that particular scope's ability to dial up it took over 14 mils off and it was an imperceivable droop if you look at this right here you can literally see the gap on the left on the right side of this picture i'm pushing the barrel in toward um the radius surface there where it's supposed to sit and on the left you can see there's a good bit of space there and uh, that barrel would would shift in any of the 360 cardinal degrees of that um, receiver opening my guess is when i bought this used receiver it was stripped bare my guess is someone used some kind of a drum with an abrasive on it to clean out the um hole where the tenon goes in and uh took a, just enough out that uh it completely messed up the fit so what i did is before doing this, if you notice a kid barrel, this part of the, is this, I guess is the part they call the mortise or something, but anyhow, on the right, you can see that that is straight across. Um, and on almost all barrels that come, it has a radius on it, including the Ruger barrels. And the interesting thing is if you're going to put a um, V block in there, all the surfaces are flat. Or square, squared off and flat. So pushing a V block against a radius shape just really doesn't make sense if you can push it against a flat profile. I mean, look here at the, uh, this is a kid V block. Everything is flat. Uh, if you don't equally draw that V block in there and it makes contact with that radius surface, you literally have to have both sides of that, the, the screws going in there at the exact same torque. And we know how difficult that can be uh, on a good day to just get those things turned in, let alone absolutely equal. Whereas on the kid, that flat spot rests right on the V block once it makes contact and pushes equally in there. So what I decided to do was take a file and make it flat. Now this is the Federson 16 and a quarter inch barrel. Um, you can see it's got some red paint on it from uh, previous mounting in an old receiver and pulled it out and decided I was gonna file some of this off so I would have a nice flat profile. And there you can see um, it's squared off at the end as the same way that a kid um, barrel tenon is where it makes contact with the V block. The next thing is was to push it down in there and check it out. And you know, the flat part is um, actually at the same level 
as the mounting block for the V block. It probably could have been a little bit more square, but it was pretty close and uh, it made a big difference. Here again, you can see the gap. Uh, we're reproducing the gap, the play in there, even with the tantrum. Use the tandem cross V block in there initially, which is can developed to have a one section that's sort of like a can that the tighter you draw it, the more it pushes the barrel up and in. Um, but even up and in, obviously still lost 14.7 uh, 14 mils um, at distance. So what I did is I stopped by um, AutoZone and bought a pack of feeler gauges. They're pretty darn cheap, little pieces of metal of all different sizes. And I found one that would fit in that space between um, the, the mounting block on the receiver and that portion of the tenon where the V block grabs it. Uh, hit and miss, trial and error, I found one that sort of snugly started in there and then I took the next size up. Cut it to size, and what I did, as you can see on the um, left picture, I didn't need much of it. I just cut it so it was enough to fit in the radius of the mounting block. And then what I did is I held it in place, which is tough to do. It's a spring steel kind of metal, and pushed it down in with pretty good force. Not the same kind of force you would need to put a new barrel in a new receiver, but it was enough that the pressure that it was creating was definitely would have been pushing that uh, barrel up into place. And again, you can see I'm working it down in there and on the right side, you can see it's in place where I left it. And this is where I began to put in the tandem cross V block and tighten it up again. Put it in, tighten it up to, I know everybody says 10 to 14 uh, inch pounds. Uh, I went to 15, it was easiest to read on the gauge. So they're both set at 15 inch pounds. And you can see that the difference in this V block in the design, the top portion is a little more slanted to the degrees in which you would normally see it with um, a standard V block. But if you notice the bottom is thicker, it's shorter and it's a little bit thicker in profile so that as this pushes in, that thicker profile pushes up on the barrel as you're driving it into um, the place how, where it's going to be seated. Um, again, you can see it's, it's actually sitting more square across the top than it did originally. And that's it. Um, the interesting thing is that uh, we weren't sure what to do with that. We got an idea, just like we shim a scope back in the day. You'd put some shims under the scope mount that went right on to the um, action, the receiver part of your rifle, or in some cases, you know, shimming inside the scope ring itself uh, to get a couple MOA or mills of elevation or declination. And uh, that shim really did an interesting job. I uh, just mounted a scope on it um, and it has with the shim, now this is an MOA, but it's got 74 MOA of up and 16 MOA down. That seems mostly normal. So that shim job has worked for that. Now I haven't shot that yet, but zeroed in. Um, we've got 74 up and 16 down. That's pretty close the way it should be. Uh, so yeah, if you've got a loose barrel, don't know what to do, give this a try. Spend a couple of dollars at uh, AutoZone or one of those places and uh, get some feeler gauges. Find the one that fits in easily. Pick the next size up and go with that one. Force it down in there. Make sure everything is good and tight. And then have a good V-block um, to help drive that into place. So check it out. Hope it helps. Let me know.